Tonight, the 15-round World's Heavyweight Championship between former undefeated world champion Joe Lewis and the present NBA champion, Ezard Charles. Tonight's Blue Ribbon Bout, the 15-round World's Heavyweight Championship between Ezard Charles, the Cincinnati Cobra, the current NBA heavyweight champion, and Joe Lewis, the Detroit Brown Bomber, the undefeated former heavyweight champion of the world. And it's just before ring time. So let's look in the ring and see exactly what's doing. Tonight, it's the big question of the battle of the ifs. And the big if tonight seems to be divided in two parts. Two big questions will be answered in just a few minutes when Joe Lewis, Detroit's Brown Bomber, who gave up the heavyweight championship undefeated 18 months ago, faces Ezard Charles, National Boxing Association Kingpin, for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Now the questions are, can the great Lewis come back at the age of 36, over two years since his great last title effort, and just how good is Ezard Charles? This bout marks the first in New York for the heavyweight title since Lewis knocked out Jersey Joe Walcott in 11 rounds on June 25th, 1948, here at Yankee Stadium. Lewis, with that fight, I think, established himself as perhaps the greatest of all champions. For well, the record book shows that it was the 25th defense of the coveted crown that he won from Jim Braddock back in 1937 in Chicago. And he defended his crown, as you know, 15 times more than Jack Johnson, 19 more than Jack Dempsey, and 21 times more than Jim Jeffries. And great champions like John L. Sullivan, Jim Corbett, and Bob Fitzsimmons defended their crowns once were then dethroned. By the way, the action in the ring right now, as you see, is the midget who has come into the ring. And as he's in there, wandering across, the boys are saying, throw him out, throw him out. So the excitement, of course, is always attendant upon one of these great little pieces of side play. And of course, they are the bow. Introducing from Cincinnati, Ohio, wearing black trunks, weighing 184 and a half pounds, Ezard Charles. Charles. His opponent from Detroit, Michigan, wearing purple trunks, weighing 218, Joe Lewis. Lewis, 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. Now, as you look at the center of the ring, there's the usual huddle as Joe Lewis and his uh, managers and All trainers right, and Charles, both take their orders from Mark Hahn. familiar with the rules of this state, and I'm here to see that you box according to those rules. Be careful of your body blows. A low blow may cost you the round. If you score a knockdown, go to the corner to which I send you and stay there until I tell you to come out and resume fighting. In close, I want you to punch with both hands free. When I see you clinch in there, I'm going to tell you to stop punching, and I want you both to stop punching on the break and step back clean. Now, shake hands, and good luck to both of you. Well, you know, officially a championship bout with no champion in it is what you're looking at tonight. The winner, however, will be recognized in New York and by the NBA as the world champion. You're going to see the famous Joe Lewis in his famous fighting style and an Ezra Charles, who is a cobra and a striking puncher with hand always held high. a different Lewis. He's not out to counter punch, he's out to end it. 36 years of age, his opponent 29. Lewis with his back to you. Ezard Charles, easily identifiable with the stripe, the white stripe down his trunks.
first round, and there's excitement and action. A goodly crowd here tonight. And you can hear them in our Paps Blue Ribbon microphone. This is a Lewis who constantly stalks, as you know. Charles has Joe's nose just slightly colored, but Joe is in at a punch. Thirty-three pounds difference in favor of Lewis. Two hundred and eighteen to one hundred and eighty-four and a half. Notice how Charles keeps that right high up to his chin to shoot it out in case he has to. Crafty, agile, excellent boxer. One minute to go, first round. Joe tried for the punch that time. They may talk about Lewis's reflexes being slow, but his punch is still there. Half a minute to go of the first round. Although Charles is considered rather light for a heavyweight at his weight of 184 and a half. Remember that Bob Fitzsimmons weighed 156 and a half for his championship fight with Jim Corbett back in 1897. Now as we follow Lewis back to his corner, the crowd roared for the exciting action of the first round. Joe Lewis, as you know, and perhaps you don't, so I'll remind you, has fought 61 bouts in his career. This is his 62nd. He has never fought a preliminary. He won 60 of those fights, lost only one. That was the knockout to Max Schmeling. Knocked out 52 of his opponents. Never fought a draw. Now let's go over and take a look at Ezra Charles. Ezra Charles, at 184 and a half, has fought 73 fights. He's won 67 of them. He's lost five. He drew one. He was knocked out but once in his life, as was Joe Lewis. And he KO'd 43 of his opponents. Now there's the 10-second warning whistle. Round two. And we'll see what's going to happen. Comments around here indicate they're all waiting to see what's going to happen. Both, both with those beautiful lefts. One off a counter by Charles, which is unusual. And now they're punching. Sentimental crowd with Joe Lewis and delighted that he is forcing fighting rather than waiting for the counter punching. And Charles hitting. I think the exciting comment is that Ezra Charles does not seem the least bit frightened of Joe Lewis's great prowess. First of the combinations that worked, and Lewis landed that right hand with two minutes to go of round two. <laughs> Lewis seems much younger than his 36 years, the way he's going in these first two rounds. I don't know what his plan of action is, but it certainly has proven that he wants to get out and end it as fast as he can. Many years ago in the Billy Kahn fight, Lewis said, I'll box him and then knock him out. He's boxing Ezra Charles tonight. They are punching each other, and the blows are telling in their landing. One minute to go of the second round. And the crowd likes this one because this is really a good fight.
Charles hasn't uh, changed his style. He's beating Lewis a bit to the punches. Half a minute to go of the second round, and most everyone is now on the edge of their seats. They didn't quite expect it to be this good so early. They're talking up around the ringside. The comments are all indicating exactly as we're passing it on to you. The round is almost over. And there it is, the bell ending round. You know, as an amateur, Joe Lewis won 50, uh, 54 bouts, 43 by knockouts. Charles was never beaten in the amateur ranks. He won every tournament he ever entered, about 12 in all. Here we go, round three. <laughs> Lewis imperturbable. Charles exactly the same, but always willing to lead. Despite the craftiness and the agile and the fluency, or the agility and the fluency, Charles is constantly wary of the devastating power of the Joe Lewis punch. His excellent pictures show you that Charles is able to reach Joe, and Joe is looking for that tag. Two minutes to go, round three. There it is, there it is. An almost slip by Charles that time, and the crowd saw it, but Joe delayed. Superb fighting machine that has been Joe Lewis is superb again tonight. Charles slowing just a bit now in his actions. Remember that no heavyweight champion has ever regained his title, although in this case, Joe Lewis gave it away, didn't lose it in the ring. Yet no heavyweight champion has ever won it back again. Charles is matching them with him now. to go. Round three. Joe's face is just a bit redder than it was when he came into the ring from those left hooks that flick out and land and the rights that cross over. But Joe dramatically always moving in, always moving in. Excellent to see them not clinching, always breaking their own clinches. Half a minute to go, the third round. Joe Lewis, Ezard Charles, and perhaps mighty happy to bring you all the action so that you can see it. Charles is willing to bury his leads, left or right as the case may be. He loves to hit with that right. There's the end of round three. And you know something? Well, this broadcast tonight is making great history. Never before has an event been heard or seen by so many people. Not only here in America, but right around the globe. It's being shortwaved to Australia and New Zealand 10,000 miles away to Latin America and Little America and to our armed forces wherever they may be. Well, we're ready to go into action in round four. Most fans consider Joe Lewis as KO of Max Schmeling in 204 of the first round, the quickest in a heavyweight championship bout. But that's not so. Back in 1908, a bout was ended in a neat 128 by Australian Tommy Burns. Well, the pattern of the fight hasn't changed. Lewis, 33 and a half pounds heavier. 
seven years older. Cincinnati Cobra keeps moving in at him. for Lewis struck out like the Cobra that Charles is reputed to be. Two minutes to go of the fourth round. Startled but not hurt. Charles maintains his poise. always looking for that opening. Most of the fight experts felt that Charles would cut Joe Lewis. But there are no marks on either fighter. That's the first indication that Charles was backing up and backing up cautiously. to go of the fourth round. There's Joe Lewis striking out now. Crowd groans when Joe holds back with an opening quite apparent to everyone. It's a different Joe Lewis missing three blows in a row. Half a minute to go of the fourth round. more severe than I've seen him in the whole fight. His reflexes worked. You see him dance away that time on the faint? Charles perceptibly seems tired. That is, tired of taking a punishment. The round's almost over. You'll hear Joe Bannon ring the bell. And that ends the fourth round of the heavyweight championship bout, which has stirred the imagination of all who are here as we have gone four rounds now and await the bell and the whistle for the fifth. Here in Yankee Stadium, we've got the usual buzzing excitement that attends a World's Championship boxing bout. As I told you earlier, the celebrities are here in great numbers, and they include the familiar names of people who are always at sporting exhibitions of this sort. The great names of the newspaper world, swelled by a great number who are in the East for the forthcoming World Series, and all by plenty who are convention-bound in the great metropolis. I remind you that Joe Lewis weighed in today at 218, the heaviest he's ever been for a heavyweight championship bout. And Ezra Charles tipped the scales at 184 and a half, giving Joe Lewis a weight advantage of 33 and a half pounds. Although he is spotting, as I've told you, his arrival exactly seven years in youth. So far, the rounds have seemed to distribute themselves. We have the Ezra Charles striking out, willing to match with Joe Lewis, the Joe Lewis stalking and not trudging backwards, but always stalking, always stalking. Round five. Charles always seems stronger in the first minute and a half of any round. And something seems to uh, set him back so that he can look Joe over to see perhaps what damage he's done, if any. And there he is. Throwing those blows. And he's connecting with Joe, but not too cleanly. He hasn't got the solid punch that we know Joe has or had. But he mixes. Well, you can put the seal of approval on this bout so far, just as you'd like to put that Pat's blue ribbon seal right in front of you on the table. Yes, sir. Two minutes to go in round number five. Hazard Charles with the lighter stripe down his trunks. Now, as we notice, the round is half over. 
And Charles begins to slow down. Now, whether he's looking to see what's going on or what to do about his patterns, I don't know. But Lewis has his combinations working when they're working, and he's willing to set them in. Charles has been striking the cleaner blows this round, and Lewis's have been glancing. Neither boy is marked. With one minute to go of round five. The big thing I'm looking for is to see whether Lewis slows down, whether he gets down off his heels and stays down, even in that famous plotting style. The first indication that age may be taking its toll. Lewis waiting to get in, but Charles still flailing away. Half a minute to go of round five. Undeniably, both superbly set up in perfect conditioning and with the proper equipment for boxing. Lewis continues to stalk. The round is almost over. And show almost connected just as round five ended. Round six is now about to come up. I might tell you that Jim Jeffries came out of five years retirement a long while ago to meet Jack Johnson at Reno in 1910. He was age 35 and Johnson knocked him out. Here we have Lewis out of retirement fighting the NBA heavyweight champion, Joe Lewis, the undefeated former heavyweight champion of the world, trying to do what no man before him has done, win back his title. And now he's aggressive as he's meeting a very aggressive, lighter opponent. The pattern has changed a bit now. Now in close, I see that Lewis is beginning to develop a mouse under his left eye. Yes, there it is, quite apparent. No obvious markings on Charles. Two minutes to go in the sixth round. Joe's beginning to breathe a bit now. Close here at the ringside, we can see that. Now, Mark Kahn constantly saying out of the way, has very little to do as the third man in the ring. Both these boys, superbly clean fighters. The pattern has changed enough so that we see a mauling round now instead of the long distance clean fighting. And amazingly, Charles is willing to stay in with Joe Lewis. Now let's see. Lewis, I think, has perceptibly slowed down, but Charles has, in a sense, too. One minute ago of the sixth round of the heavyweight championship out here at Yankee Stadium in New York City. Brought to you with the good wishes of Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. Yowza, yowza. Well, here they are right over our microphone. And the exchanges are terrifying. Joe's willing to strike, but he's missing. And the lighter opponent wrestled him away that time. Half a minute to go of the sixth round, and Charles is dropping his right hand, which normally he keeps very high as protection. That may be an indication. Joe's noticed it. The round is almost over. Well, here we've definitely seen something tonight. We see one pattern in which a uh, lighter opponent has been striking out with the best force possible to try to, in the best essence of his Cobra style, cut up Joe Lewis, aging as he is, 
and to slow his reflexes down to the very lowest point. On the other hand, Joe Lewis, having started the fight with an aggressive amount of boxing ability, trying to get to his lighter opponent to score that punch which will slow him down. Charles, as you recognize, has been spinning Lewis beautifully when in trouble. And despite the fact that he slows down, as I have witnessed in the uh, one minute and a half after the round begins, he has nevertheless been able to watch everything that Joe Lewis has been doing. Here we go for round seven. <laughs> One other observation. I noticed that uh, Lewis didn't like the feel of the ice pack on his eye. And now you see Charles is striking for that eye. There's the pattern for this round. There he goes, hitting in there constantly. And Lewis's eye is beginning to develop a tremendous closing. It's almost an aperture now, slip. So we always have the spectacle of the Lewis that we knew with that tremendous right, and there he threw it. And the constant application of good blows with craftiness and agility and fluency by Ezra Charles. Two minutes to go in the seventh round of the heavyweight championship out here at Yankee Stadium in New York. And a goodly crowd on hand and giving generous applause to all the exchanges. Picture reveals now the boys are going into the milling style for the round you see is almost half over. And Charles willingly steps away to watch what Joe Lewis will do. Joe, for a second there, had Charles in trouble, but Charles weaves out of it. I think Charles has developed a mouse under his left eye, too. So they both have slightly closing left eyes. So they'll both be fighting with one eye. So it's right hand. Hitting to right hand. One minute to go in the seventh round. And we come to the slowing process. The man, 36. But yet with the punch, the youth with 29, and yet being slowed down by punches. Charles still keeps hitting with that right. Of course, what Lewis wants is Charles to come in close as he slows him down. Half a minute to go, and the crowd anticipated that was it, but Joe missed both shots. Joe keeps Charles in close. Well, what the two questions were, can the old man of 36, and I use the word old advisedly, and how good is Ezra Charles? The question is being answered almost halfway through the fight. Round seven is almost over. As the fight goes on, the excitement of the crowd becomes, I think, more dramatic in this respect, that they're just watching, constantly watching, to see whether Joe is going to slow down Ezra Charles and get to him, or whether Ezra Charles will be able to close Joe's eyes and keep flicking away at him. So far, it's been the perfect fight. There's Charles with that speed, the rapier stuff, in the first minute and a half of each round. He has excellent recuperative powers in between the rounds, and it keeps him moving for at least a minute and a half. There's Joe, now counterpunching. Joe is a little at a disadvantage with that left eye, continuing to close, so the left have got to be thrown with a little speculation. And so for that matter is Ezra Charles. Not quite as apparent to the camera as it is to us at the ringside. Two minutes to go of the eighth round of this 15 round heavyweight championship bout here at the Yankee Stadium in New York. Charles continues to pummel away in that first minute and a half, always keeping Joe at a disadvantage, and then suddenly Joe seems to have the weight. 
to put into Charles. So far, he hasn't leaned that weight on Charles during the fight. Here they are, right over our Pasco Ribbon microphone. Charles has been fighting with the greater severity and a greater amount of punching ability in this round than he has in any previous round. So perhaps that remark I made about his recuperative powers stands in good stead. One minute remains of round eight. And Joe Lewis is beginning to slow down a little bit as Charles keeps punching away. And he's brought a slight touch, I think, of a fatigue look to Joe's face and just the slightest touch of claret to his nose. So the Cincinnati Cobra is fighting for the face, fighting as he planned to fight to cut Joe Lewis up and slow him down on account of his years. And so perhaps we're seeing in this half minute remaining of the eighth round, the best of the ability of Ezra Charles, which may answer one of the questions. How good is he? The other one has yet to be answered. Can Joe come back? Round is almost over and Joe keeps stalking as he does right up to the bell. Shooting the short ones inside now and they have a telling effect on Ezra Charles who evidently senses the round is at an end. Well now as we tabulate at the ringside. It's just a question of how the boys see it where they sit and what they feel. And certainly I think the whole fight is predicated on what everybody else has known and read. Just the two questions that have to be answered and both have to be answered at the same time. Round nine. Charles up on his toes. Joe Lewis back down on his heels now. Joe Lewis superbly conditioned. He had to be for this kind of a fight. The two right hands that Charles put in were the toughest two of the fight. Joe just remained erect. Two hardest, of course, by Charles. Joe put one in early in the second round, you'll remember. But he's scoring his punches at will now in the first minute and a half of this big round. Two minutes to go in this round. Charles scoring with telling punches. Joe watching, never closing his eyes when the punch comes at him. One of the great attributes to his fighting ability. Joe is now bleeding and suddenly had a look of uh, that tired feeling on his face. Perhaps just remarshalling his forces. But the fight is now going to the pattern the experts declared would be. Now the punches are coming at will. As Charles watches to see what he can do with Lewis and punches to prove it. The greatest of the great champions with his record in the record book. And the youthful aspirant to the undisputed world heavyweight town crown. One minute to go this round. There he is Joe Lewis at 36 as it Charles at 29 years of age. Bob Fitzsimmons was 37 years old when in his first title defense he was knocked out by Jim Jeffries. Fitz, however, was 52 years old when he fought his last battle back in 1914. So we'll bring the age question to you as Charles keeps pouring it in. It's starting to mangle Joe Lewis's face now. And Joe Lewis has brought a tremendous rush of claret from the nose of Ezra Charles. He got one in close there. It was a left uppercut. The round is almost over, some 15 seconds to go. And that was Joe Lewis getting in one of his telling punches. Charles wiping the blood away. It was a beautiful left just a moment ago. The round is almost over. 
And there you have Joe Lewis taking a copious beating throughout the round, number nine, from Ezra Charles, and then suddenly in the last 25 seconds, scoring with a delightful inside left uppercut with a tremendous amount of telling impact, slowing up Ezra Charles as the blow landed heavily and did damage to Charles's nose, which is now, of course, being treated by that capable trainer, Ray Arcel, who, as you look at the ring at this particular moment, is in there working on the left of your camera as you see the back of Ezra Charles' head. And uh, they'll let Ray Arcel do all the work. Well, there you have the spectacle again of the uh, NBA heavyweight champion, always striking out in the first minute and a half, and then Joe Lewis suddenly uh, springing into action. And now the comments around the ringside as my ears listen are, it's not the same Joe. Well, of course, at 36 with reflexes slowing down, it still may be the same Joe. He's fought fights like this before, and suddenly when he found that opening, shot those devastating blows. Round 10 coming up. Well, with two-thirds of the fight almost gone by and both boys needing refreshments, I would presume that as I do, I would always enjoy that Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. How about you? The claret has come quickly again from Charles's nose. It's his right nostril, and Joe keeps banging away with that left. Now you have as a Charles leashing and lashing. How much effect a bleeding nose will have on a fighter? I don't know. It's an annoyance, undeniably, and causes motions with the hands which should be held. So it may be that the bridge of that nose has been badly damaged. It appears that way. Joe is working on him, and Joe with a counter that time almost caught him. Two minutes to go of the tenth round. And if anything, Joe seems to be stronger now with the advantage of having hurt his opponent. So both because their heads are banging together, are covered with just a bit of blood. Joe is now stalking. The sight of the blood has enraged him. The crowd senses that he's after him, and that's why you hear the roar in the background. The cameras go up. Charles backing away. Joe goes in. Left eye closed, the nostril breathing. That's why he's backing up. Joe is after him. Joe Lewis. Now stalking his prey. Waiting to work those combinations off the left. In close then, the camera couldn't reveal it. A terrific short right. It landed on the button of Ezra Charles, and he's bleeding more profusely. Joe's best round now, and the crowd roaring with it. One minute to go of the 10th round. Knees buckling slightly, Ezra Charles back against the ropes that time. Joe constantly looking for that opening. This is the drama. This is where what you see tells you what you want to see. Charles beautifully spinning Joe Lewis around when in trouble. Half a minute to go, the 10th round. Joe Lewis showing his best. Almost 30 minutes after the fight began. So the question of 36 years of age seems to be disproven at this moment. Charles lashing back as best he can, and yet showing that agility and flexibility and the fluency as the round is almost over. And they'll have to work on him and work on him hard in this corner. Here's the bell. To round 11. Like all crowds, what's gone before means nothing in the memory of what Joe did in that last round. And if Charles fights back, he's certainly a match for Joe tonight. No matter the outcome, he's giving Joe a good battle. There is something that may be an indication of the end. As Joe put in a powerful punch to the body, he took two or three counter punches two rights that were uh, sort of loosely set to the head so that as a Charles was not disturbed and was willing to flail back. The left uppercut that time by Charles slowed Joe down. Two minutes to go. 
in the 11th round in what has been a good fight. And that's not giving expletives away either. Well, the crowd certainly has been roaring its approval, just as you'll approve Pap's Blue Ribbon Beer. Now the minute and a half of the round has gone by, and we'll have to see whether or not this is where Charles will step backwards and allow Joe to come to him. Joe will lead and Joe will counter, and this is an unusual procedure. Joe's best weapon is left hook. As are Charles, that best weapon being a left, but a following straight right, whistling for the jaw. Those who have missed this fight, I think, have missed something. One minute to go of the 11th round, and the procedure remains the same. Procedural-wise, Charles lets it slow down, gets to his corner and takes that recuperation. Joe's eye, his left eye is almost closed. In fact, it is, you might as well say. He has a difficult time opening it. As it Charles' left eye is also closed, now the blood is not flowing as it was earlier. Isn't it wonderful, in a sense, to realize that a man 33 pounds less will spin the heavyweight champion around on occasions? Condition is certainly something of a great asset here because you see Charles lashing back now after the damage of the last round. And this round is almost at an end. It'll be the 11th round, the end of it. And much to talk about and much to figure. We'll wait for the bell. Well, there it is, the bell ending the 11th round. 12th round is now coming up. The whistle is sounded. Joe Lewis looks a little bit, uh, well, perturbed in his corner. Here he comes out against Desert Charles. This is the slowest of the first few seconds action of any round. There's Charles starting his leads now. That's the first round I've seen him go to work at the body. Both boys completely blinded in their left eyes. Attesting to the punching power of both. Both will keep punching away at those eyes. Well, there's the cleanest shot of the fight you've seen with Joe's head snapping back, a long right-hander. slowing down, but still he has that powerful punch. Two minutes to go in this round. Round 12 of a 15-rounder for the heavyweight championship of the world. And your host, Paps Blue Ribbon, mighty happy to bring you this Blue Ribbon bout. Mighty happy. Well, the action has slowed down a bit, but certainly the stirring quality of the fight hasn't. This is the slowest of the action rounds so far that we have seen. And as I've said, it's a credit to the superbly conditioned Charles because he's weathered the blows and he's still willing to mix it in there with a dangerous puncher like Joe Lewis, who himself is in superb fighting condition. So their equipment is exactly the same and the damage is exactly the same. One minute to go of the 12th round. And so far, I would presume the slowest round of the fight. And it should be, from the pace these boys have kept. Joe looking for the opening, looking for the opening. Every now and then, seeing it, I think. We're looking to see exactly what damage is being done so that we can pass it on to you. This is a round where both boys, I think, are cautious and wary, looking for the spurt to the finish. A half a minute to go of round 12. And so far, a fight both boys can be very well proud of. Patterns change again. Lewis willing to lead if he can get close. Both 
eyes, both fighters, the left eyes, completely closed. Inside the 10 second uh, set to now. Charles striking out, scores heavily. And there's the bell, ending the 12th round. And Joe Lewis goes back to his corner, much more tired than I've seen him before. And as a Charles going back to his corner, superbly conditioned as he is, evidently in good possession of all faculties as he awaits round 13. Now there's a whirl of excitement around the ringside from the press. As they look around, how do you make it? That's the answer. What do you think? Will it wind up the way we think it will? What have you got it marked on your card? So we'll look ahead to round 13, and here they go. Again, back in the original pattern, despite the fact that his nose always draws Claret from Joe's left. He's out springing around to start the round. Throughout the fight, I think the indication that Charles is willing to mix it with Joe has been one of the astounding features. Joe always willing to move in. Now the drama rap represents itself again. How well, how well can Ezra Charles fight? Well, that's been proven up to this point. The question now, the other half remains, can Joe come back? Two minutes to go of the 13th round. The round with the hard luck number. Both boys are slipping on their punches. They're not hitting as heavily as before, and yet they're punching. see the plotting cannonading half a minute to go 13th round the end of the round round 13 the crowd liked that one well 13 rounds have gone by and but two remain and so far both men have had exactly the same damage both left eyes completely closed both noses bleeding both scoring with telling whistling rights both willing to mix it Charles always slowing down a bit as the round comes to its conclusion Joe constantly stalking looking for that big one powerful punch to regain his heavyweight championship, which he gave up when he retired. Charles willing to prove that he is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Round 14. measures now Joe Lewis is leading rather profusely from his nostrils it's a 
milling fight now if the word milling can be used. Two minutes to go of the 14th round. He'll go back up on that one. His eyes went slightly glazy on that one as if he were tired. Joe is tired against the ropes. He looks as if that eye is painting him, and it is. It's completely closed, has been for quite some time. But instinctively, Joe fights. Right now, this is Charles' best opportunity, so watch it. One minute to go of the 14th round. around the ringside is stay away Joe stay away Joe and I guess you know the dramatic quality of that half a minute to go of the 14th round the Cincinnati Cobra still springy Joe plotting The bell ending round 14, and both blows were struck after the bell. Joe Lewis with a right, and a retaliatory right from Ezra Charles. Well, the next round is the big round. That's the one that tells the fight, and I don't know how you scored it. We have it scored, and scored just well enough to uh, have a pretty good indication of which way it's going. And the next round is definitely going to be the round. Undeniably that, and there you saw the specter of Joe Lewis, another of the men who might not be able to come back. Certainly in that round, Cincinnati Ezard Charles took a good lead, a commanding lead, and sprung into action, striking telling blows that caused Joe to remain against the ropes on the far side of the ring and show perceptibly that age has taken its toll. Whether or not he still has the power for one damaging punch is what the 15th round will reveal. And that's up to you to judge. We here at the ringside know the comments and know our reaction. And here's Joe Lewis for the 15th round as they shake hands, Mark Kahn separating them. In a similar situation, Walcott once did a very damaging thing when he lost the disputed decision. But here it is, Ezra Charles fighting. Superbly conditioned, having taken the best of Joe Lewis's blows, Ezra Charles still on his feet, driving. Lewis realizing. with the great instinct of a champion. And that is not a cliche. Two minutes to go. Final round. 15th and final round of the heavyweight championship bout here at Yankee Stadium in New York City. The seconds tick into history. Telling right hand by Charles that time. The round half over. And a good crowd here at Yankee Stadium sitting in on what has been an excellent bout. Willing to wrap up a fight. 
because he thinks he has it won. Joe Lewis ready to slip behind with 50 seconds to go. Intense drama. Charles constantly flecking away, striking heavy blows at Joe Lewis. Half minute to go of the fight. Fifteen seconds to go, and Charles still pelting away. The fight's gone all the way, and an era ends as the bell sounds and the crowd roars its great approval. And now we're going to step into the ring for the simulcast with radio and television. So watch, and we'll pass the information. waiting of course for the official notation as far as the fight is concerned as we wait for the cards from the judges Frankie Forbes and Joe Agnello and referee Mark Kahn standing as we are on the rape apron at the moment we'll just be waiting for Johnny Addy to announce it and then we'd like to interview those who have been the participants in the fight including Marshall Miles the manager of Joe Lewis and Jake Emmons the manager of Ezra Charles should at this particular moment, as a Charles win the fight, it will be the first time that Ray Arcel has been in the corner of a winner. He's been in the corners of 10 men who have fought 11 fights against Joe Lewis, and all of them, in a sense, were fractured. Tonight, of course, up at 12, it may be that Ray Arcel will pull it. Jimmy Cannon of the New York Post, now in Korea, covering hostilities, once remarked, Joe Lewis is a credit to his race. gentlemen, Judge Joe Agnello, Scores it 12 to 3, favor of Charles. <laughs> Judge Frank Forbes scores it 13 to 2, favor of Charles. <laughs> Referee Mark Khan, 10 to 5, favor of Charles. Winner by unanimous decision, and heavyweight champion of the world, as our child. And now greetings to the radio audience. Joe, before you go, Joe, Joe, Joe for an old friend. Joe Lewis is going out of the ring, and I haven't been able to get him. So we'll talk to Ezra Charles. I thought I could get Joe. We've been friends all through his fighting career. Ezra, and Johnny Addy's holding his hands up. Well, Ray, you finally did it. Hiya, Chris. Ezard, I'd like you to look the way you're talking. Ezard, I'm Ted Husing. How are you tonight now? Thank you. I feel very well, thank you. Well, you fought a magnificent fight, undeniably, and you were superbly conditioned, weren't you? Well, thank you. And I'd like to uh, give thanks to the fellows, uh, who worked with me and got me in shape for the fight and who made it possible for me to have a fight. And uh, I'd like to express my opinion, I mean my thoughts, rather I'd like to give thanks to, to God for giving me strength and courage enough to win the fight. And uh, since I won the championship, I feel very proud about it. And, uh, and I'll try and, and, and do my best to keep it as clean as uh, the previous fellow who just stepped down, Joe Lewis. I'll try to be as much of a credit to it as he was.